Hi, 3DMJers. This is Andrea Valdez, and you are listening to the 3D Muscle Journey Podcast. Before we dive into today's episode, just wanted to remind everyone to head over to 3DMuscleJourney.com and sign up for our Big 3 newsletter. We call it this because in case you haven't noticed, our team comes up with three new pieces of content every week in the form of two articles in one podcast episode. Rather than remembering to check back with us three times a week, we can send it all to you in one single email every Thursday. This weekly digest also includes direct links to any other content that Team 3DMJ coaches are a part of throughout the entirety of the internet. Whether that's guest appearances, interviews, seminars, or courses, you will not miss any of it. So... If you like hearing about all the free resources that we have to offer, all the products we sell, all the projects we are a part of, and all the ways you can get discounts, reminders, and early access to them, head over to 3dmusclejourney.com right now and sign up. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy the show. Today, I'm talking to Brad Loomis and Eric Helms about how to track your training. In this episode, we basically give our straightforward answers to a couple of broad questions. One, how do we track the training programs of our clients? And two, how do we track our own training as athletes ourselves? While those questions are simple, the answers we give are pretty detailed and specific and lengthy as per usual for us. So we'll talk about the systems that we use the software that we use, the objective data we require within that software, the subjective data we also keep track of, and the personal nuances that we're mindful of but don't necessarily openly communicate with our own coaches or athletes. So this one's a little bit shorter than usual, but it packs a pretty practical punch, and we hope you guys can still get some really good insight from it. As usual, if you have feedback or comments on this episode, head over to 3dmusclejourney.com or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash team3dmj and leave it under podcast number 69. So here's my conversation with Eric Helms and Brad Loomis all about how to track your training. So as of two years ago, I'm going to ask Eric, because then I'll go to Brad because he's all fancy and new. How did 3DMJ do client reports exclusively as far as the spreadsheets that we deal with in our clients? We would just send Excel sheets back and forth. As attachments via email. You got it. Yeah. So we would have uh, a place for them to write in. We'd have a spreadsheet written out of what they're going to do. And then they would have a spreadsheet to write in what they'd done. Uh, sometimes we had a specific, specific programs where we would just write, did you complete this, yes or no? Like if we used a, like a, a shiko esque approach where it's unlikely they would miss something or it's not a... It's a specific load you're supposed to do, and you can just put what it is. Um, yeah, but yeah, Excel sheets. I still do that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay, but Brad, you got fancy last year. What do you do? Well, we just we got rid of the whole messy email and attaching thing. I, I don't know if we did, but I'll say I you did. did. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. I did used you? Google Drive as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead, Brad. No. But yeah, just you, you, there's no more messy attaching and, and, and having 19 different versions of possibly the same sheet. You know, you just, you know, it's on the cloud, you know, and then you both just edit the same sheet at the same time. There's one sheet. You can put your notes in there. And, and you know, like we're talking about, it's, it's almost mandatory to just keep coach and client on the same page um, when tracking training, you know, because they know what they're doing. You know, and they're there in the gym. And, you know, the important part is that we know what they're doing, you know, even though we can't be there because obviously there's going to be phases in a bodybuilding prep where I'm not going to be a good time to overreach. And even if you are running your own training and we're guiding you nutrition wise, we need to kind of intervene and say, look, this is not the time you know, to go and, and try to add a set to everything or finish every set with an AMRAP because we need to dig here, you know. And so it's, in my opinion, it's crucial just that the coach and the client be on the same page, however they may be. I mean, some coaches just need videos, you know. They'll just, you just record your whole workout, you know, and I'll just put it on fast forward and watch the whole thing. And Shit. that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Me, I, I need numbers. I'm a numbers guy, you know, and if I need to get more involved in that, just give me a last set RPE of what that set felt like. And then, you know, we're pretty much on the same page. 
Yeah, that's actually a good point. I don't just get video. I mean, I also get videos from, especially powerlifting clients. I'll have them send me their heaviest sets of the week as videos, um, or at certain points in their in their build up. You know, I'll get I'll get videos from them when they're when they're doing stuff, um, or just troll their Instagram account to get the same thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I uh, I still keep the same system. Because if I don't, then I'll get screwed up. Like, as soon as I started asking people to, hey, here's a link to your training in the Google Sheet, and, I, you know, you've got access, I've got full access, and anyone with a link can have access, just send me the link every week, just like you'd attach it. Because um, if they don't do that, then I'm like, well, where is it? And I've got to go find it, and then it ends up being a pain in the ass. So I find it's, it's basically <laughs> like an attachment. They just have to paste training. And then they paste the link to the Google Sheet, and then we could both edit it. And it's okay. also nice because what I used to do with the Excel sheet was um, I would only have to download it and modify it when I wrote them a new program. Right. And then if, if I made a nutritional change, I'd say, right, I want to cut 25 grams of carbs on your low days. Note the change on the side on this date that you made a reduction in 25 grams. And then at the top of your sheet, change your current uh, you know, versus your, your, your beginning. And even the best clients will eventually forget to put the change on the right and the change at the top. So now with the Google sheet, I just go in there, I make the changes and then I told them I made them. Um, and it takes, you know, three seconds. So, yeah. um, it sounds then nice. I don't have to, I, don't well, I can't it. tell you how many times, like a year or two years ago, I, part of my check-in would be the slightly annoyed, why didn't you mark this? <laughs> like, <laughs> Hey Jimmy, thank, you do, you're doing great. You know your body fat's looking lower in your videos. Posing looking looks great. You really nailed that that side tricep. But uh, just about those TPS reports, you know, I've noticed you. <laughs> just, when when were you gonna update your current macros for me? And I believe last week we made a carb cut in, in a in a cardio edition, but I'm uh, not seeing it in that far right corner. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I, y'all make so much sense, and it sounds great, but I don't do any of that. Um, it, it's easy, Andrea. All you no, no, do no. Is but just... I like my notes, so like, I can't tell if it's because it's easier or harder because my OCD. But we still, um, like, I remember when I first signed on with 3D, not as an athlete. When I first started coaching, the typical verbiage is or was use the same email tree, right? Like forever's and ever's, and it'd be like ginormous. Uh, tip for most of my athletes, we actually get a separate email with a, you just upload it as a new attachment every time, and then I click it so I can, you know how Google does the preview, so I don't have to download mm -hmm. it, I can just see it, but more importantly, I think what, and the reason the sheet doesn't work, I guess, is it's not enough notes for me, so I don't know if y'all do this and if it's just me OCD, but I start a client's video. And while they're talking, I have an Evernote file open that's just for this check-in. So they get a, like there's each athlete has a folder, and every week they get a new note in Evernote. And as they're talking, I'm typing notes that I'm listening to. And so then I know in my response I can like address everything that they said. And then I like make a little line in it, and then I'll draft up the email I'm going to send them. And it's like, hey, this is Andrea. Here's the video, and I'll attach the link there. And then it says in the chain. And like I talked about, this week I want blah, blah, blah. So then I know exactly what I said. I can go through this big, like, because in Evernote it shows, like, all their notes in a row by date, you know. And so so why I can is that mutually back. exclusive with the Google Sheet training sheet, though? Because it might not be, like, if this week I said, here's your nutrition numbers. Also, um, I'm changing your cardio to this, which I know is in the sheet, too. And P.S., with your... Whatever. I don't know, because sometimes there's like little paragraphs that I don't want to, like that I want to remember I told them this three sentence thing. I don't know. Well, I still say all that and I look back through my old emails or notes in the case you're talking about. Yeah. But then the only difference is that I just make changes to the Google Sheet instead of changes to the Excel. Like it's. I don't change either. Like it's, I don't touch it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You, ha you have them change the Excel sheet, right? No, I just know. Because it's in my Evernote. Okay. It's in my Evernote. So I always refer to the Evernote. I don't touch their sheet. I don't download it. or, um, And I ask them, like, on column I, can you, whatever. And, like, usually they will. But if they forget, then the next time we could change, like, because I mention it every time I tell them to, like, at some point I'll catch up. But I have my notes in Evernote. 
Yeah, you could still do that and use a Google sheet and just not have an yeah, attachment. Probably. And it's just less less files to to download and the um, One. It's, a little, it's a little nicer with the client probably too. Well, and the great thing about uh, the Google Sheet too is that you know I'll, I'll put myself little notes and plans in in the future, you know, and so a lot of times whatever their check in day is there on the sheet, I'll say, okay, you know, I'm going to put some notes over here. This week is going to be high volume, and the next week is going to be low volume. So you know, I think that week will probably go ahead and take away one of your high days or bring down macros or anything. And then yeah. the week after that is going to be low volume. And I think that week after that, I can put that all in there so they can kind of see what's coming up, you know. And so it's kind of like your Evernote thing. So not only can I put, um, you know, and a lot of times what I'll do too is I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste the link to the video. I'll say, okay, this is an important video. And then I'll copy the link and I'll put it right there in the Google sheet for that particular week. And then, you know, if we have any, any, you know, um, discussion on, on what our plans were, I can just click right to the link right there in the Google sheet. Look at, watch that as I'm looking at my plans in future weeks and, it, it's again, it's just keeping us both on the same page. And I'll say, okay, now this is going to be all subject to change, but at least right now, it's looking like we probably had better do some digging during this cycle of training when your volume is the lowest and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just kind of one of those things where I don't think you have to do that if you're doing yeah. your own programming. You know, if I was doing my own programming, I would probably just keep it in a notebook or on a chalkboard or something like that. But um you know, when you're when you're talking about a team, you know, whether it be just two people or, you know, let's say that I needed to pull in Eric, you know, as a little bit of a consultant, you know, well, and mm -hmm. I can share the sheet with him or I want to get, you know, a Steve's take on on uh, the diet, the, the dietitian type side of it. You know, we're going to start digging here during this phase. Take a look. Tell me what you think, you know. And so that's I think that's the biggest thing that is important for me is that I need to see. I need to see globally, you know, what's going on kind of in one, one, yeah. you know, one little frame on my, on my page. That's how I just like to see things is just weeks and weeks and, you know, months and months of plans and data that I can kind of put in my little also, tea brain and make decisions. It also gets around the issue of whether or not someone is a Mac or a PC user, because you can mm -hmm. operate within mm -hmm. Google Sheets and then you don't have to, like we used to have compatibility issues when someone didn't have Excel. Not like yep. they would have to get the uh, notes, the open open Not office notes, I'm one. Sorry. It's a what's it called? Numbers. Hello. Numbers. Yeah. Well, there's numbers, and there's also one that's, that's open office, which is basically an open source version of Excel that people would use. Interesting. Um, yeah, and yeah, so that that's kind of a a thing of the past with Google Sheets, yeah. which is nice. It's even and more. I, I have actually used it a few times when, in the same case as Brad, as when I've got like two or three people who I want to look at at the same time, be it Steve or or when I was working with Luke, I wanted his um, his injury specialist to look at his his training, and I was just like, "Hey, just pass that link on to on to him, and then we're good to go." Cool. So, so my global like planning for people is on a paper in front of me on this corkboard. <laughs> 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 I just need, oh, I can't show because there's like names on it, but yeah, there's like all these weeks of the because um, Christian's doing the Orton, so I have, and she got me, you know. We only had so many weeks, and so I have like blocks. But the reason, and I want to ask you this, Brad, when you pre-plan so far ahead, um, I do that privately, but I don't share that with them because, and I won't share more than like two or three weeks because it could always change. Yep. Um, do you find that that ever gets in the way? Like either that they are like they feel like they let you down because things change, or like maybe you plan these six months, something happens in here, and then like all that's trash afterward after month two or something. Well, I think first I probably better clarify that I, I'm the same as you, Andrew. I don't plan more than about two or three weeks, you know. So most of our, our blocks of training are like four weeks. I'll say, okay, coming out of this deload, okay. I want to get four high days, you know. And then the week after that, maybe we go back down to two and we'll do that okay. for two weeks. So I, I, it's not like I do months and months of, of planning ahead, but okay. I try to keep a step ahead, you know. And that oh, yeah. way, okay. clients kind of know what to expect and say, okay, well, you know what? Coach Brad has got no high days here. I probably better. No, 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 not a, not food wise. I was thinking that you had like three or four mezzo cycles in there, just like this far ahead. Oh, and that gotcha, seems, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, no, same thing, same okay. thing. Yeah, and in fact, really, that it almost kind of conflicts with Google Sheets because then when you go to change it, it won't change the other cycles that are going to follow. Like, say, I'm editing four of eight. 
right? Yeah. And the way that my spreadsheet works, if I edit four of eight, it won't change five, six, seven, and yeah, eight. Yeah. You know what There's I mean? Formulas, and yeah. that I hate that because then there's so many numbers there that I'll I'll, I'll inevitably mess something up. So <laughs> yeah, and it's different. And that's about it. Yeah, um, I think I plan longer in advance than, than you guys do. Yeah, I was gonna say I think you've said that you keep like a year or two of nutrition, right? And I want new sheets often. But go ahead, say what you're gonna say. Sorry. Yeah, so I I will often write um, anywhere between a four to twelve week block for someone and slot it in because uh, I can I find it's easier to change it on the fly in advance because especially like if, if I know when a vacation's coming, so then I can. If I can see the whole block in front of me and go, right, that's where the deal has got to be. I can work back from there. Or with, uh, for example, when I we have a, like, when you've actually submitted your entry into the, like, like you're doing a, a contest, and I go, okay, that's peak week. So I know how to modify training for peak week. Then I work back from there um, and then figure out where I'm going to give someone, like, you know, freestyle your own week, day after comp, or the week after comp, et cetera. Then I work back. Um, and just really super technical unnecessary thing for the podcast i'm just going to tell you while we're here brad is if you do like if you want to change something and you don't want the formulas to mess up you can copy what you had and then like what i'll do is i'll, I'll write a new eight week block and i'll use the last tab as the template and i'll copy it as the values so there's no anything there and i, and I just to make that as like here's your last eight weeks of training and then the current one i just edit their what was their old training thing and just delete out what they've entered and that mm -hmm. gets around that pretty quick but that was probably a waste of information for the listeners no i was really, <laughs> I was really into it but How you know i will say that Excel? yeah i will say that i love your sheet for doing like uh monthly skypes or or, or like even like uh kind of quarterly skypes you know mm -hmm. because you can plan out an eight or 12 week block and if it's a pretty um, savvy client in the gym, they can just run with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then when they report back in, you got, you know, you can see everything, you know, you can see five, six, seven weeks. Of, and I like to see that. I like to see a lot of time right in one view with very little scrolling, you know? And that's one thing I love about your sheet is that I can instantly come up to speed with a client just, you know, basically after five minutes of viewing the, the last mm -hmm. block that you did on the sheet, you know? Yeah. Also, I think because I'm currently working with a handful of clients who I've been working with for a long time and I have a pretty good working relationship with, I'm comfortable with them saying like, yeah, here's the eight week plan. And then like, I mean, this, this, it happens more often than it doesn't that like, for example, Bryce will be like, yeah, dude, I, I couldn't complete all three sets of that load. I had to drop it down. I'm like, that's all good. And then I'll, we'll, I'll be like, here's what we're going to do to change it next week. I want you to cut out a set here. Um, just do the top set here, do a back off, blah, 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 blah. And that's kind of the, the norm the, the, like we'll set up the plan and then we'll adjust as we need to as we go um which i don't know for some reason that works better for me to adjust something pre-existing than to kind of have to recreate every two weeks or three weeks you know so i don't feel like i'm recreating ever like we still do eight like i almost always eight week before we would do anything different mm. i don't like any longer or any shorter really but at the same time uh like I was saying, like nutritionally, I know we're talking about training tracking, but... So do you mean you write the eight-week block, but then you only drip feed them like two weeks at a time kind of thing? No, no, no. I give them eight weeks. Like, I don't think eight weeks is a long time, I guess, is, is what... Oh, when you guys say you, you have... said you only gave two or three. No, no, no. Like, um... Okay, so the paper... I'm so confused. I know, right? I think we should <laughs> clarify, though, because I think it'll help people. So whenever I was telling you all that, like, I don't share... So, like, this is August through October for someone. That's, like, my... I know you can't see this. If, I should cover the name. But you know what I'm saying? So I have like approximate, like this says push hella hard here, run mark, mock carb up, fly the show on the, you know? Like I have this, but it's oh. just for me. And then. Oh, I have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll tell, yeah. like, then the, the training is still there, like eight weeks at a time or whatever. But um, I think it's a more of, I guess, a nutritional thing that I'll say this week, you know, we're starting this type of three low one high for now we'll give it a couple Dang. weeks and if so we'll change it but it's not like i'm not gonna tell this athlete i mean that athlete actually is pretty advanced so i'm not worried about like adherence or whatever but there's some people that i'm not comfortable being like so we're gonna maintain this month and go real hard for two months and then come up high for a month like i don't i don't, know, I don't tell See, them I all that we much. Talking, 
I thought we were just talking about training. That's why I was confused. Because I'll be write correct. Eight training because blocks, but I well, we decided that was on the goal of the podcast. Really yeah, I don't, I don't do anything for people in advance as far as nutrition. Okay. They get just the, the next week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unless we know there's a holiday, then obviously I'll yeah. we'll have a game plan for that. But. So I just ruined it all. I'm sorry, listeners. <laughs> it literally says the and title thank you of for this. tuning into 3dmj see you next time. <laughs> it says tracking your training and i'm like going on a nutrition tracking rant for 10 minutes okay um, you know here's here's one thing though okay. i've heard from some people that while the google sheets back and forth is really useful for the coach and the client when they're in like kind of review mode or, or update mode it's not great for taking your training to the gym you know um it's not that well displayed on the screen and you can't really easily print it out so I've, I've definitely had people give me that feedback like it'd be nice if i could just print something out and take it to the gym because i don't want to have my phone out in the middle of my training or i'm worried to drop a plate on it or i'm resizing it because it doesn't really fit my phone etc so you know, you know yeah. what might be a good fix for that if we, there was like this app if there was an app that you could use to track your training. <laughs> yeah, there are, there are definitely <laughs> training tracking apps. That was super <laughs> subtle. Yeah, I personally, <laughs> I personally use Gravitas, and it's amazing. Wow, yeah. tell me about so. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Gravitas is the app for lifters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't, it's it's for iPhone, and it's great, <laughs> but not, it's pretty cool because it's you can update it as you as you go and enter your RPE and put a template and then repeat previous days and just build on your progression plan. I have like, I don't know. I probably have like half a year of training track on Gravitas now. Gravitas, Gravitas. Gravitas. Oh. Like Robitussin. I don't like Gravitas. Gravitas. Hey, Eric, just a quick question for you. The people oh, by the way, Gravitits is what your grandma has. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a good one. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Thanks for that. I was just kind of your 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 folks that give you feedback where they don't like to resize it, you know, on their phone and they yeah. have trouble doing it. Um, what do you what do you think? Are they like my age, like forties, fifties, or are no, they younger, probably thirties? It's a mix, and sometimes it's just personal preference. Like they don't like to be distracted by the notifications on their phone while they're training, uh, and then if they, so I, you know, I normally tell them things like, "Well, you can turn off your data." while you've after you've already opened it and then you can kind of do it and then you don't have to deal with notifications and then if another issue that i hear sometimes as well it's just a screen sizing issue or i don't want my phone out or i'm using my phone for music and it's a pain in the ass to, to try to look at both um i don't know i, I can't tell you what operating system they're using or etc but one thing i i will sometimes tell them to do is you know what just take a screenshot of just the week and print that on a piece of paper and you can just bring that piece of paper in for a week and that, that normally can fit long ways on a piece of paper. That's a There's such first world problem. Like I just want to tell my coach, but there's just I need to stream my music, you know, because yeah, exactly. because my earbuds yeah. well, like all the you know, it's just Or it's like funny. I gotta I gotta I gotta update the gram, you know, I gotta get video so I can update the gram and sure. I don't have time to shut my camera off and go to my spreadsheet, you know, priority. Right. How do I keep my music playing while I'm doing a PR and take a video? You can. Video <laughs> you have your friend do it and airdrop it to you. Yeah. That's what's up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, you know what I'm saying? You get two, two phones. phones to wow. wow. Yeah. There's a song about that. But, um. <laughs> one's for my I side. Got two. My side. Phones. Okay. One for my grand and one for my love. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So should we continue with that? Okay. So here's this guy's not show you, but like just write it down on a notebook. Like I prefer that. I prefer that. Which is what I was going to say. Some some people prefer that. Like my platform coach over in Reno, mm -hmm. he just writes all of his client stuff down, right in little piece of paper. And I mean, he'll have like pages and pages and pages of just handwritten logs. And, uh, I mean, he knows exactly what's going on. He knows what their training is. The clients like seeing that because I heard one client say, these aren't numbers. This is blood, sweat, and tears right here. Dang, you know, that, savage. This, this law, you 
you know? And, uh, and yeah, some folks like, you know, I mean, look at Jeff, he writes it on a chalkboard, you know, and that's one thing that Xander digs. He digs me when I write on the chalkboard back there in, in the little weight room. Okay. This is what you need to do today. And he loves checking it off. Mm-hmm. He's a check guy. And you know, if I tell him he's got, you know, four doubles to do with 150 pounds on his bench press, he gets a little hash marks. One, two, you know, mm-hmm. he loves that. And some people need that kind of motivation where they can see all of their work, you know, on a piece of paper or on a chalkboard or something like that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think the whatever you need, it's most important that you track your training, you know, so that you can, you can see, okay, this is what I've done in previous weeks and previous months. And now I'm doing more, you know, or the same if I'm repeating the block or whatever. So personally, what do you do to keep track of your training over time, Brad? Because you. Well, per- oh wait, okay. So it has to report to Eric. So yeah, what do you do to track your training as an athlete? Yes, po- me. Yeah, because when I point to you, you'd obviously know in Skype that I'm pointing at you. <laughs> God. you I'm like, yeah, you. I'm just pointing at a computer. Uh, Brad, well, how do you track? It's your funny training? that you mention that because I'm kind of old school and I like to see what I do, you know? And so I love my spreadsheet that Eric gave me, that gave me, that Eric gives me. Um, and I love tracking it, you know, in the spreadsheet. It's, I keep pointing at my computer because I've got it right here in front of me. I was updating it, you know, as we were t- talking. But at the same time, I'm, I like to see it on the chalkboard too, you know? And a lot of times I'll just, for the, for the sake of writing it down, just write it in chalk, you know? on the on the chalkboard and so i'm kind of double dutying it in a way did i just say duty double i'm double did. documenting <laughs> i do that too in a way I'll just, I'll just take it from the chalkboard and i'll just transfer it you know into the spreadsheet but that's just did, I, did you I like correct it. duty by saying documentating did i <laughs> i hope you did i hope so yeah. would be the and word it, you were looking for yeah I was, I was looking documentationing for that's what he's doing or mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> documenting but um yeah i like seeing my work on that chalkboard it's just if there's something motivating about it you know and then you put it in your g drive which eric sees uh i put it on my g drive which eric usually doesn't see until i update him which yeah, opens up you. another another little Can caveat that I love, is that i can i keep all my client spreadsheets on my g drive and so I don't need them to send me a link. I don't need them to send me anything except for a vlog or a little typed report and some videos if they're power lifters. And that way, if I'm lurking on their gram and I see that they pulled 300 pounds, this gal is going to know who I'm talking about. And I can go oh, into her and I can say, was I it on your sheet? 300 pounds. <laughs> 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 I don't plan on doing this, you know. But yeah, I can pop into their sheet whenever I want to uh, and take a look at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is not a benefit to G Drive. Um, I yeah, to me that I don't like the redundancy. So like like Barb is is the same way. So she has FitNotes, I think, which is an Android app for mm-hmm. logging your your stuff. Which and is not as good as Gravitus. Test. Well, it's different. It's it's got different stuff. It's actually it actually is very good. Like oh, the cool. analytics are quite good on it, and um, like it, it'll tell you how many sets you have for each body part and a bunch of cool shit. And you can look back and look at volume over time and stuff like that. But she logs it by pen and paper and then spends like the whole three hours we're watching some show entering it then into FitNotes. And I'm like, you know, you could just put it into FitNotes while you train. But that's, <laughs> that's kind of why I, I've I'm a, become addicted to Gravitas is because it's something that I can do in, it's in the middle of training. Like I'll enter just squatted 200 kg and hit the ch- tick mark to say I finished it and it'll go PR. I'm like, awesome. You know, and then I like, you can enter the, the RPE right then and there when you did it. Like, that's another thing I wouldn't want to, I can't retroactively remember what my RPEs were. And, um, and then the analytics are more than I could get from looking at pen and paper. Like I can look at my, the estimated one RM of my training and plot that against my volume or my relative volume load or like total sets and kind of get an idea of what I was doing at times when it was high or at times it was low, which is, which is pretty cool. So it helps me. I can get more insight. If I wanted to get that on my own, I would have to 
like getting hardcore with Excel for a week to make a spreadsheet that told me all that. Yeah. Do you, um, is there a way to share that with athlete and coach as right now, or is it just internal with your own app? No, it's pretty cool. You can follow people. That that's another, that's the kind of neat thing oh, about Gravitas. It's, it's, it's social. Yeah. So it has like leaderboards, rankings. You can comment on people. The equivalent of a like is a fist bump, which obviously is amazing. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, you can comment and follow other people's stuff. You know, it's I, I wouldn't personally use it with a client because it's not it's not a place you really like program yet. That might be okay. something that gets done in the future. But it's a great you know, it's a, like you can follow people and see all the training. I think. Cool. Kind of, so you can call your friends out for being a little bitch. Yeah, or fist bump them. For, for <laughs> or reward. fist bump them with reward, yeah. but the other way would be yeah. fun. Okay. Mm. So when I, until doing grid with David, and then the whole time I was with Birdo, and then on my own after and before, I always did both too. Because why would I make things easy? Because obviously that's not how I roll. Um, why but I'm with. Yeah, I know. Why, why do more? with more time when you could do the same with less time, right? I think it's a, per well, me, it's it's the whole work, everything. But with training mm. and journaling, I still feel like there's, I could totally be making shit up, but there's something about physically writing that um, helps me in life. Mm. So, and I mean that in life. Like, so the training, I always kept a little notebook in my bag that I would, open up my phone to like I would look on on my phone with the spreadsheet and then I would write it all down and then throughout training I would only have my music playing on the phone and and type everything out but I'd also write like little side notes and shit so I have like 10 notebooks of training from like 2010 to like 2015 and then mm. once a week yeah. I go enter it all before I would do my report with Birdo or, or whatever yeah. um, I did that for years but I used the, um, the bottomline.com so I, I would that's write it right. down and then I had, shit, training logs all the way from 2007 to 2011. You can actually, you can go back, you can find it on Bible.com four mm -hmm. years of my training. How, there, they, how do people out. do that? Just go to Bible.com, go to forum, search e, e Quelly. E Quelly. Oh, Quelly. No. oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Quelly, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Okay. It's done. But when I say in life, it's it's the same. I've tried like just actual journaling in my phone. Also, like there's a lot of journaling apps that I've purchased throughout the years, and I always end up going back to a notebook um, mm. with everything. Like, this is my daily to do list. Is this one notebook that stays here? And then the notes Word. for the Skype sh are on the back. It's stupid. Um, <laughs> but now, I guess what's as complicated as the the training is with with my coach and grid it's every week is different every day is different so I type it um, so like once a week he gives me my training for the week I transfer it from our shared Google Doc into my iPhone notes which I realize is kind of dumb because I do have GDRAR on my phone I know and then I type it as I go through there with notes to myself or whatever and then I just whatever needs to be transferred at the end at the end of every day I go tell it to David but like every day <laughs> But there's also no set check-ins, so if something's weird, I'll just text him. If he needs to see something, I'll send him a video, like, in the middle of any freaking day, and it works out. Word. Not efficient Word. at all. But I think it's just a different kind of training that needs that kind of Yeah, whatever you got to tell frequency. yourself. Well, if he's giving me daily training... I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <maybe not. laughs> no, no, that, that does make sense. And, I mean, even with bodybuilding and powerlifting training, I still make notes when I train. Mm -hmm. There's a little. There's, I, a, there's a little. I mean, I don't. I don't need to physically write it, but I make a lot of subjective notes in in, in the app. You yeah, can, I do but, too. And yeah. on, on G Drive, you can just right mouse click on any cell and enter note. You know, yeah. and you can put a little yeah. note in there. I do a lot. Sometimes I forget to erase them when I go to, you know, send Eric my my sheet. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really you know, helpful. But, and, and, <laughs> and, and, He's like, and, fuck this guy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Darn this gentleman. Yeah, yeah, is what I meant. That's but the other thing I Eric. love about about Google Sheets too is you can tag people in your comment. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'll sometimes have clients, and it, it generates an email to me. And so I'll have uh, uh, a client tag me in a little note in G Drive that says, "Hey, I I dropped to 405 on these deadlifts today when 415 was programmed." And then it generates an email, and then I can go into their sheet, and you know I can put in there, copy that, or thumbs up, or good job. Oh my job, god, or, that's know, fancy. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's pretty bitching. It's pretty bitching. And that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing that amazes me sometimes about when I, when I do set up a new client and they're used to uh, pen and paper. And I tell them, okay, now you just, you know, if you want to take your, your, your tablet with you, you know, just take it with you, you know, instead of taking your, your notebook, you know, just, just take your tablet, enter in all your training right there. You can enter it in right on your phone. And they're like, really? That's so cool. You know, it's just like the Jetsons. <laughs> Do they tell you how bitching you know, it is? You know, yeah. what blew my mind is, uh, I want to say it was, uh, it was either Joe Stanek or Chad Dolan. Okay. Or maybe both of them who told me that they used, I'm assuming it was Periscope. Maybe it was Snapchat. I'm not sure which one, but they used like video live, like to, to actually have someone would hold it for them and show the, the attempt of their, of their, their client on the platform and then they would be like all right here's your next attempt like game day coaching virtually that that blew my yeah. mind that that's, yeah, it's probably that's te- te- techni- technically that possible is, you know yeah yeah that is cool even with instagram stories you could do that now oh that's right there's instagram so live but but can you only send it to one person though yeah but i knew that of course <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I still like use Excel. Story, Everybody like, makes fun of me. It would, it would just right. like pop up and everyone could see your, your story or whatever. Mm-hmm. No? I don't know. I, guess not. I don't know. It's funny how there's some things that some of us are super up on, and then all of us still have the things that we're like super behind on. Or like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want live social media things happening very often. I, don't, I do that like twice a year for SBS Academy as a QA and a when they're in, the students are in my module. But beyond that, I'm not doing live stuff. Yeah, unless, but like... It's physically there. No, I don't... So I, Snapchats, Instagram Stories, Facebook Live, I don't really know how that Snapchat's works. I understand it. I'm so sad I don't have it anymore. IG Stories isn't the same. So I don't use either now. But anyways. Uh, like how Brad is so, like, Jetson's level on the Google stuff. And then, like, other things, he's like, well, I, when I try to explain things on the website, he's like, what are you talking about, dude? You know? <laughs> and then with the, with everything else, I'm like, I'm not going to write it on paper. <laughs> yeah, because, like, when it comes to the websites and, like, all of our, our base camp stuff, you're just, like, Jetson level. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but it, it does bring up a good point is, like, you know, what do you track for and what are you trying to get out of it? I think that's something that people should think about, like... I track so I can see what I need to do to progress and to review times of training where things were going poorly or well to see if I can infer relationships between training variables and progress or lack thereof. And because you're your um, own coach. Yes, because I do my own programming. Yeah. And a lot of people do. Yeah. You know? It sounds good. And for, for coaches, you have to do the same thing for someone else anyway. You just have to have some way to actually get that information out of it. So you have to have some way to review a block and then you have to think, okay, so is the way I'm tracking allow me to do that in an efficient way or am I leaving things to chance or guessing yeah. or am I just tracking because I'm supposed to, you know? Yeah, and, and it's also really different depending on the caliber of the client that you're working with. Like, for instance, <laughs> if I have a gen pop person I'm programming for, there shouldn't be anything I give them that they like, bottomed out or couldn't finish you know whereas like when you're programming with Bryce you might need feedback a lot more often where it's if it's not you know if it's someone that's really early in the career they don't need to be doing that shit and therefore maybe you don't need to over monitor so much mm-hmm. um, true yeah and that reminds me of my my early days as a kind of a general pop trainer I always had a printed version of my spreadsheet out you know and we had our little columns of training that represented a week and I mean it didn't matter if it was a 70 year old couple, you know, that I was training or if it was, you know, some guy that wanted to do his powerlifting me for the first time. I would always whip out their folder and I'd get out their spreadsheet, you know, their little printed spreadsheet. And I would write down, you know, everything they did. I guess that's just the OCD in me, you know. And oh, no, they did. I was a trainer. 2000, I had a clipboard with me every time, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I see a lot of personal trainers in, in, in many gyms that I go to and it's, they they have nothing in their hand but like a bottle of water in their phone. I was you gonna know, say when I when I was personal training, I would have it on my phone. Yeah, yeah, um, and I, I it just blows me away because sometimes I don't think that they're even really tracking anything. You know, maybe they are. Maybe they're doing it on their phone, but it doesn't look also, like me, they're doing much. Me and Brad were personal training. I think 
a little before they had good software for this. And I think you were personal training after us, right, Andrew? When were you, when were you a personal trainer? Uh, last time was probably 2010. Last time I had a couple clients. Yeah, and that was the year I stopped personal 2011, training. 2011, maybe. So, okay. Yeah. So you're just old and I get it. Yeah, I'm just saying that from two thousand <laughs> from two thousand five to two thousand nine or ten there wasn't great on phone yeah. stuff. You were you know? still playing Snake. Was, yeah, exactly. I got the Nokia. It was still easier to, to just write it on a piece of paper and keep it in a metal cabinet in the in the studio. So Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, what else about considerations? with tracking your training. And like you yeah, said, so what, what you matters track? to you? Oh, what do you track? Well, that is a good point. For our listeners and our athletes or in general? I don't know why I was trying to bring like Jen Pop into this. I guess because a lot of our, um, a lot of our listeners are personal trainers, not always of athletes. Yeah, even though our, many of our listeners are themselves athletes, they probably work with some Gen Pop, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I personally track sets, reps, load, effort, RPE, um, and that's about it, to be honest. Other stuff is all calculations from those things, you know? Yeah, I don't think I do anything different, and not all of them track RPE for me. Mm -hmm. Same. But, yeah. I'm trying to think if there is anything different. Um... No. Nah. And then it's just like compounds, it's usually a little, or your bigger movements at the beginning of the day, however you like to talk about them, your big whatever. Um, it's usually assigned more specifically than the accessories. Um, that's about it. Yeah, and shoot, I mean, I have to say that even me, just recently, I've, I've just started tracking like last set RPE, you know. Okay. I, only, I only really, before that, I really only did it when it was like a really hard set, you know, and I needed to let myself know, look, that was a 10. And next week I'm supposed to use a heavier load, you know, for less reps. You might think, you know, about auto-regulating that. And, but I think that's just probably because now my, my training is a little bit more, I guess, appropriate, but it's more challenging. I know that because prior to that, I could usually finish all of my sets, you know, with an RPE of nine. And if I couldn't, I would kind of tactically think, how can I, how can I hit this rep target with these loads? Um, maybe I need a little bit more rest before I do this next set. You know, uh, maybe I better go help Xander with his homework. You know, and then come back and do this set. You know, but now here as of late, I I found myself recording last set RPEs probably more frequently than ever. Yeah. There's yeah, a, how to record ahead. RPE is an interesting one too. Like sometimes I think it'd be nice to give them someone that's first set RPE so that I can figure out how much, you know, so that I know mm -hmm. the fatigue will build up. But yeah. people fatigue differently. Or sometimes I'm just like, yeah, you know, last set RPE should be this, work backwards from there. What mm -hmm. I've kind of settled on most of the time now is I give someone a, a two point RPE range. So basically, a, I want you to th three by six between a seven and nine RPE. And I tell mm -hmm. them, I want you to kind of start closer to seven. And then okay. the fatigue should build yeah. you up and you'll be closer to nine towards the end of it. And then how to adjust if they hit a below a seven or above a nine. Interesting. Yeah, and I've, I've even had a few people even start using reps in reserve that are not familiar with RPE. I because mean, for some, true. it's just a little bit more intuitive to, to figure out there was, one, there was one rep in reserve or there was two reps in reserve as to thinking, okay, let's see, a nine RPE is there was one left in the tank and an eight and a half was there was two left in the tank. So That's the yeah. only way I ever think of it. I'm always like, how many could I have done? Okay, and where is that on the scale? Nine, okay. Like, that's yeah. funny. I have to use one to get to the other, but I never thought of it as like... Yeah, mm -hmm. some people need a direct <laughs> link. You know, I, need, I had one rep in reserve, period. That's you know, funny. they don't have yeah. to convert it to an RPE. Um, so I know it's not directly related to, like, I track a lot of other things that I don't need to give to my coach. Um, probably, maybe I would if he was also my nutritionist and body comp person too. But, I, I, like, I track how I'm feeling um, in, like, a separate, 
Like, there's subjective, like, coach needs to know this particular exercise on every Friday kills my knees because, blah, 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 because I can't run anymore in the mornings before I back squat. Like, something like that, I'll tell him. But if it's like, okay, at, you eat breakfast, you do this thing, you go to the gym, and you keep tiring out before you're supposed to be done, like, you know, should you be eating more? Did like, those kind of weird things I track elsewhere. Um, so it's like things that hurt, um, noticeable energy differences, sleep. If it, like, if a session was shit, but I don't need it, like, because I know I woke up at 5 a.m. for no reason and I just decided to go to the gym, I don't need to tell my coach, like, we should really back off to it or tell him this was terrible because I know exactly why it was terrible and I can write that down myself and make note of it, you know. Um, what is it? That's a good point, that there should be both objective data tracked and yeah. subjective data tracked. And we, we've talked about this probably more with nutrition, like, you know, yeah, you enter your daily weigh-ins, but then please make a note if you had a high sodium meal the night before or if you got up four mm-hmm. hours earlier than the weight in because mm-hmm. then we can kind of, I can pull that out of the average if I want mm-hmm. or just keep it in consideration that, that may not actually be a new low or a new high. Yeah. kind of thing so but yeah same deal with training i think you need to have some way of tracking subjective information that's relevant and then objective even if you're coaching yourself and you think you'll remember it nah, you will forget. Yeah. yeah and you can recognize the patterns like you said like you like going back mm-hmm. to see the where you can find the associations um and instagram dude anytime i have a train victory that shit's going on instagram because i want to know <laughs> later on <laughs> you know what i mean like um, yeah. I re like I often go through my own Instagram feed to look back at certain things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another, yeah, another that's... thing I like about Gravitas is you can link your Instagram videos of training to your sessions in there. It's fancy too. But the thing that's so nice about Instagram is it keeps a date right there for you. Mm-hmm. It used to be like I've got mountains of files in my external hard drive that I had to you know put the date in there you know squat you know this weight by this reps on, you know, 9, 11, 2000, you know, 10 or whatever. And with Instagram, it's right there. It says right there, you know, yeah. November. 15, it's handy. Oh, it's super handy. I mean, it can screw yeah. people up, but it's handy. Like I also, because, um, of learning all these new movements, the past couple years, like Olympic lifting and gymnastics stuff. If I find like now they have that bookmark function. So I have like 20 videos of people that I feel like do this certain thing really, really well. And I want to be able to watch it whenever I want. So like, yes. um, yeah, like I eventually want to learn to do like 10 or more ring muscle ups that are butterfly. And that's just a new thing that started with grid for efficiency, like butterfly ring muscle ups. Not everybody does that, but there's like two or three people that do them really, really well. They're like the fastest in the grid. And I'll like go through, find the three or four videos I want to keep forever. And it's there. Um, hook grip, with all the Olympic lifting, obviously, um, not everybody lifts the same, but if I can recognize as I'm getting better, these certain three or four people on the national team have a form that's pretty similar to mine. I'll save a few of their videos for reference because they're really slow motion. Um, yeah. yeah I Actually, it. yeah. That, that's another another thing you can track, too. There's some, some like uh, apps like Iron Sense or... Um, Bar Sensei, that, no, that, I don't. I think Iron oh, Sense. Oh, the about. bar path thing that track. Yeah. Yeah. So you mm. can actually that that's a really good thing to track on your own is video your lifts. That's something I have a lot of lifters do so they can get a better gauge of RPE, uh, just to do a little more form assessment on their own. I think it can be done too much, you know, and like yeah. you're trying to correct just your normal deviations in form that probably don't need to be corrected. Just need more practice and skill development, but. Yeah, for like a, an Olympic lifter, it might be useful to look at kind of the the loopiness of your, your bar, bar path or mm-hmm. things like that, or to assess and then to, to gauge your RPE. I'll often just ask Barb what she thinks my RPE was on the set, just to see mm-hmm. if whenever I'm a little confused if, like, I think that was a nine or is that more like a nine and a half? Because she's seen me, seen me miss just as many times as I've seen myself miss, so. Yeah, it's funny how... You, you learn other people's nuances like that if you lift with them enough. That can be handy, mm-hmm. too. But, like, if anyone besides Brandon spots me on bench press, they'll come in and grab it before. Like, I always have the same really severe sticking point for a stupid reason. I don't know why, but I, mm, oh, shoot, like, 98 times out of 100, I can pass through it. It's just, like, always kind of there. And everybody mm-hmm. grabs my bar. I'm like, no, other than B, because he, like, <laughs> or, or Birdo, because they've seen me do it so many times. But, 
I'm the same way. Barb spots me all the time. So like, <laughs> I do like 100, 160 kilo touch and go bench, and someone's like, "Yeah, you want to spot?" I'm like, "Nah, I got this." And then I ask my 60 kilo kilo wife to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I never understood why people were like, "No, no, no I'm, I'm lifting heavy. I need a really big, strong guy." And I'm like, "How much are you planning to miss this by?" Like, exactly. you know, Could you even be doing this? <laughs> yeah. Because when I miss a bench, it's by like two and a half to five kilos. So, so long as Barb can lift two and a half kilos, I'm probably going to be okay. Yeah. Um, I guess like, yeah, if you're doing something where you're going to get out of position or you could just totally dump it, then sure. But to me, that's not like a raw bench, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I'm wearing a shirt yeah. and I'm going to throw it at my face, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing I've noticed with me is that I'm a terrible gauge of RPEs. Terrible gauge. Of I your own or of other people's? Of mine, of mine. Because huh. every now and then I'll just do a little test. I'll just do a little audit, you know. And so, like, Eric will say, okay, you know, this is this should be, you know, you should stop at an RPE of nine. And so I'll get to what I feel like is an RPE of nine, and I'll think to myself, okay, now, is this truly an RPE of nine? Let's collect yourself, and let's just, for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and do one more just to see what it feels like. And I'll do that one more, and I'm like, geez, I think I got another one in me. I think that was an <laughs> RPE of eight. <laughs> You know, and so that's why I like to video myself, too, because I'm a much better gauge of myself when I video myself. Yeah. Uh, or sometimes I'll just throw it out there to the gram. I'll say, hey, guys, what do you think? You know, tell me, is this an RPE of uh, seven or like six? You know, and I'll the get there wrong a lot, though. <laughs> like you can filter it to kind of I mean, not filter it, obviously, technologically, yeah. but I can kind of look at who 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 commented. You know, and if I yeah. see that, you know, Joe Stanek, you know, and, and like uh, Eric from TSA commented, and I'll take theirs, and then everybody else will yeah, just kind yeah, of. Yeah. You know, Thanks for the input, uh, Tommy45. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 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 Could have done six more, bro. Oh, dude. I hate that. I hate that when you like hit something that's obviously having you like proud of it, and someone's like, you had 20 more pounds left. I'm like, I wasn't supposed to. To do, it. I don't know. Like, yeah, a lot of people. Some do that people shit. think you're always supposed to hit the PR every time and I always go. I did. I that way. Yeah, um, I was that well, way for a long time. You, you messed up, bro. You got another five pounds in there. Like, <laughs> now nah, I did what I was programmed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? Come on, program, homie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or like when you do a PR on purpose, that you're like, okay, I'm going for five more today, and you do five more, and they're like, oh, do it again. You have ten more. I'm like, no, because I did that, I have nothing left. Like, they don't understand. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a one-shot kind of deal. Um, yeah. What else do y'all track? Do y'all track anything else? Uh, aside from nutrition, anything else related to your training? Video, RPE, subjective notes about how you're feeling. Nothing comes to my mind, really, okay. to be honest. It's pretty much I will up. actually track, track rest periods when I'm doing BFR. Okay. So when I'm doing blood flow restriction training, I do make sure that I keep it the same rest interval. But that's not something I write down yeah, per se. I just have to keep track of it. So that's, I'm always doing, you know, 30 to 60 seconds, that kind of thing. Yeah. I well, see, that's, a lot of times when I do BFR, I don't even track the load. I'll just put BFR. Until I can't stop. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> I, no, but I, that's I'm, what I used to do. I used to do that until I started doing BFR more regularly. But now mm-hmm. that I do BFR like twice a week, um, I do track load because because it's actually something I do. It's like it's like an exercise for me. Like I don't do leg extensions, curls, or tricep pushdowns. Not BFR now, so I do actually look at. All right, now that I got you know forty reps on my first set and twenty five on the next three, I'm going to go up and load on the next increment. You know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm pretty new to BFR, so I haven't really yeah. used it much. Yeah, I time almost all my rest periods but just so i know not with like um an intention i don't know i mean it's a sign to me half the damn time anything after my like primary lifts it's usually part of a complex or part of an emom or whatever the fuck but like um my heavy yeah, lifts though tra- now you're training for a sport where time, time completion <laughs> is the most important variable yeah. yeah so but i mean like when i just have like here's your snatch work for the day um or especially my clean and jerk work, I will time my rests to be somewhere between two to five minutes, uh, two to four minutes, depending on what it is, uh, because I before clean and jerks, I didn't know that like they're so damn hard that I'll never feel better. 
Like if I'm doing squats, I can finish a set and like I, I guess because I've been squatting for so long, like I can feel when I'm ready to get a clean jerk. So I'm like, fuck, that was hard. Five minutes later, I'm like, it, it, it's still going to be hard. Like it's just because the impact. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'll just have to time myself and like be aware because it's not going to like dissipate. It's just overall like my body's rocked and we're just going to have to do this again. Okay. I think yeah, we did I think a good job. when it comes to tracking. Dude, we're under an hour. Do you have any uh, really intelligent closing things to say, Brad? Anything bitching to tell us about? I think I already said it. You know, I think it's important that you track. <laughs> I think it's important to track. You find your best way to do it. And then, yeah, if you have a coach, you know, if you don't use G drive or something, you keep somehow find a way to keep you and your coach on the same page so that basically you guys both know what, you know, each other are doing and thinking. Yeah. And other than that, find what motivates you, whether it's a checklist or a chalkboard or a spreadsheet or, you know, whatever works best for you. I think it's just important that you track. Yeah. Eric, anything to add? No, I completely agree with Coach Loomis. Hey, me too. Okay, we'll end <laughs> it there. Talk to you all soon. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Eric Helms. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. As you know, at 3DMJ, we promote evidence-based approaches to the lifting community. If that's something you want to dive deeper into, I'd encourage you to check out my research review, Monthly Applications in Strength Sport, or for short, MASS. This is a review that myself, Dr. Mike Zerdos, and Greg Knuckles put out every month. We cover the latest research publications that are applicable to strength and physique athletes, or anyone who's looking to get stronger or improve their body comp. Our content is in both written and video format. For more information on how to subscribe, check out 3dmusclejourney.com slash mass. That's 3dmusclejourney.com slash M-A-S-S for further details. Thanks for tuning in.